Hi, and welcome back. This is the professor. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about the linear speed of an object traveling in circular motion. I'd like to demonstrate something real quick. Linear speed as I'm swinging this cord around in a circle over top of my head may have a radius of two feet or three feet or whatever how long. As this is twirling around, I want to I want to calculate linear speed or if the linear speed of a person doing the same thing, like a child swinging a rock, we're going to evaluate a problem doing so. Or a martial artist swinging a, a, a rope dart or a rope with something at the end, right? We're going to test the linear speed. However, let's look at the, some formulas here. Linear speed, we have a circle here, a simulation of maybe something in the middle here, or a person swinging something around at time t. So v is equal to s divided by t. And now, when we look at this, this is going to somehow, some way, break off or simplify itself into a, another formula in which the angular speed is going to be given. The angular speed omega of this object is the angle theta measured in radians, swept out, divided by the elapsed time t. That is, omega is equal to theta divided by t. Now watch this. The angular speed is, is the way the turning rate of the engine of an engine, let's say your car, is, uh, is described. When your engine is idling, say probably, probably at 900 revolutions per minute, is one, of the, one that rotates at an angular speed. We all have cars, and we know that our engine has a lot of revolution, goes a lot of revolutions per minute depending upon what type of car you had, and if you're revving it up or if you're not revving it up, like stepping your foot on the, the gas pedal. Let's look at this. At 900 revolutions per minute, we want to convert this to radians per minute, right? So 900 revolutions per minute is equal to, or, well, 900 revolutions per minute times 2 pi radians per revolution which is going to give us 1,800 pi radians per minute. Now, that, could, that, could, that number could vary depending upon how many revolutions per minute a particular engine or car or machine. That is perhaps multiply the 2 pi radians per revolution. But in this case, since we're dealing with 900 revolutions per minute, then we multiply that still with 2 pi radians per revolution, which will give us 1,800 pi radians per minute. Let's look at something else. The linear speed, a little bit of derivation here, where v is equal to s over t. Remember what s was? That's the, that is the, uh, the length of the arc, right? Remember r times theta. S is equal to, here, R times theta. Remember that from previous lessons? Well, R times theta divided by T, and then we somehow, we, we simplify this, and we break this up. Well, R times theta over T is actually what? Theta over T is omega. So V is equal to R times omega. Because omega is also what? theta over t. Let's do a problem. Find the linear, we're finding the linear speed of an object. Let's see, a child is spinning a rock at the end of a two foot rope at the rate of 180 revolutions per minute. Find the linear speed of the rock when it's released. Okay, and we want to convert the solution to miles per hour. So given is a radius of two feet. And omega, right, is equal to 180 revolutions per minute. Right? And so we wanna we want to we want to convert that to radians per minute. So remember from the previous example, 
180 revolutions per minute. Now we multiply that by what? 2 pi radians per revolution, which will give us 360 pi radians per minute. Now, we'll plug this value or these values into the formula V is equal to R times omega. So the radius is 2 feet times 360 pi radians per minute and it's equal to 720 pi feet per minute. So this is approximately 2,262 feet per minute. So we want to take 2,262 feet per minute and convert it to miles per hour. Now, let's look very closely. Conversion factor, you can do this two methods here. I'm going to show you. 88 feet per minute is equal to one mile an hour. So let's plug that in, in, and convert that. We'll take 2,262 feet per minute and times it. Here's the conversion factor. Usually when you convert something, you want the top unit on top so the bottom unit can cancel with the other unit. And so one mile per hour will be on the mile per hour will be on top because that's what we're looking for. And then 88 feet uh, per minute will be on in the denominator. So when you calculate that, and actually these will, cro these will cancel out, these will cross cancel out, not cross multiply, but cross cancel. A lot of students have a tendency to say cross multiply, but it's cross canceling here. You will get 25.7 miles per hour. This is your solution for that. Now, method two, when we use the conversion factor, one mile is equal to 5,280 feet, and also 60 minutes is, is equal to one hour. We also apply those conversions to the, to the solution to the solution at hand. So 2,262 feet per minute times one mile, being under the not, the not, uh, in the uh, numerator, divided by 5,280 uh, feet, that's in the denominator, times 60 minutes over one hour is equal to the same same solution, which is 25.7 miles per hour. Remember now, you need to cross cancel where appropriate, where feet will cross out, minutes will cross out, uh, feet will cancel out. Whoops, not this is miles. Sorry about that. We don't want miles to cancel out yet. We don't want that to happen. But minutes will cancel min minutes here, minutes there, sorry. Minutes, minutes. And we're left with miles per hour. So this will be uh, 25.7 miles per hour. Again, watch your conversion. Watch how you write things very clearly, because you can make a simple mistake by crossing out the wrong thing. You want to cross out feet per feet here, feet over feet here, and then minutes and minutes here. And then you're left with miles per hour at the end of your solution. This concludes the first part of linear speed. However, we're going to talk about the linear speed on Earth and also the speed of the moon on the continuation of this lesson. We'll see you then.